All right, in this video, I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of the newly updated Starlink app and basically the uh, new features that are contained within and generally how to use the app and the various features. So let's go ahead and jump into the app. And once you open the app and you already have your Starlink uh, satellite dish set up and everything is working, uh, you'll see this page here uh, where you'll just see a little graphic of your uh, dish itself with a, <coughs> a line basically indicating that it's connected to the network and it'll say online and your network name up at the top and your account info in the top right over there. And then various notifications uh, that'll come through. You'll see it kind of at the middlemost portion here where the first thing I have here is upcoming pause of service because I currently have uh, the pause of service uh, enabled. So after August 31st, uh, the service will not continue until I reactivate. Uh, but anyway, down here, we have various different menus. You have statistics, network, obstruction, speed test, settings, support, and alignment. And at the very bottom, you have uh, feedback as well as advanced settings for the advanced settings of the dish. Uh, so let's go ahead and start off with statistics. And basically what this menu does is it provides a bird's eye view of essentially everything going on uh, with your network. So, or basically your network hardware, I should say. So you basically can see at the top here what your ping success rate is for both the dish as well as the router. Currently I'm sitting at about 95 or so percent on both. Um, it should be a little bit higher uh, because for some reason my dish keeps dropping out as you can see indicated by these drops down in this gra graphic here. Uh, so each one of those jagged points pointing downward is a drop out of service or some kind of network disruption. And so I'm going to have to do probably some repositioning of the dish because I'm getting some dropouts which is fairly annoying. And if you want to get a little bit more detail on the outages that have been occurring, you can hit this button called Outages. And then from here, you can basically scroll through the entire list of all of the different things that have happened uh, within basically the last hour. So you can see here, I mean, I've had a bunch of stuff. It booted up, it searched, it had a bunch of obstructions, <coughs> uh, some various no signal received. Um, but it seems like the majority of what's going on in my, my case is obstructions. So it tends to see something that's blocking the signal again, which is why I might have to go out and reposition it at some point. Uh, but you know, anyway, so that's cool. You can do that. And then it gives you the last 47 minutes worth of information here at, at a glance. So you can see an obstruction happened one minute, and 24 seconds ago, a network issue, no signal received like that and then we have latency so you can see your current uh, live latency which is running right around 30 milliseconds and then your median which is your average millisecond latency uh, is running right around 29 to 30 and you also get this visual of that as well so the higher spikes are higher latency and then the lower ones are lower latency and then you have your latency distribution and you can see what this says it says router measures round trip time to the internet every second. Historical data is kept up to 12 hours. So that's kind of giving you a bar graph of your latency percentage within the last hour again, or since the last time you booted it within the last 12 hours rather. And then lastly on this page, we have throughput, which this is a really cool uh, graph because this allows you to see in real time um, what and how much network use is going through the hardware and or the dish slash router. Uh, and that goes for the download and upload speed. So currently I don't have anything going on effectively. So there's no uh, throughput or traffic on my network. Uh, but you can see right around 1230 or so or 1247 or ish. You see this blue line that spiked up. And that was a spike of a download that happened for a brief moment but then it went straight back down to idle. Okay, then going back out of here, so we also have, have this network section, and this is where you get to see <coughs> basically all the devices connected to your network, uh, whether they be wireless or wired uh, via Ethernet. 
So currently I have five devices connected to the network. I have a, um, a phone, two Synology NAS servers, a desktop, and a laptop, uh, three of which are wired, and then the other two are 5 gigahertz wireless network. And then we have our nodes, and the, this would be the section as if you had uh, set up the mesh node system. So if you want to expand your network coverage across uh, your house, uh, and you can go and buy additional routers and basically wirelessly connect them to each other uh, to provide kind of a mesh network to give better coverage to your overall home if you happen to have, um, let's say, uh, dead zones in a particular room of your house. Uh, you could do that to help with the signal. And then we have this check Wi-Fi range button down here. And essentially what that was going to do is you click it, It'll bring up your camera, and effectively what it's going to do is it allows you to walk around. So you can see I'm walking around right now. I'm currently in my garage, and you can see as you walk around, it'll tell you your signal strength. So the farther away you get, it'll start to turn yellow and red. And then if the greener it becomes, it tells you that you have a much better signal. So as you can see, I go back over here, kind of where I was sitting at just a minute ago. You can see it kind of goes back to being a little bit of a yellow color. And this is great for if you want to kind of map out your entire home, walking around into the different rooms and places to get a general idea of how your signal strength is and your Wi-Fi coverage is throughout your home and whether or not you might need that mesh uh, system connected. Uh, and then we can hit view results when you're done, and it'll give you a calculated average uh, signal, which says excellent, 82%. Obviously, that was a really short uh, little test there, so that's not entirely accurate. But yeah, so that's cool. And then we can go back. And then we have the obstruction section. Uh, this is where you get, a again, an overall bird's eye view of basically what the satellite dish is seeing outside. So all of the blue area is clear open sky and the red is something that is blocking the antenna from uh, viewing the satellites. So currently I have a big red spot on the right side of the dish and then I have a few little red speckles kind of in the front of the dish for some reason which I don't particularly understand actually because uh, the front of the dish is completely open, so I'm not entirely sure why or what exactly it's seeing uh, in this area. And you can see it's red, but it also has some blank spots that aren't uh, filled in with blue. And that's going to be kind of your dropout signals, where you're going to just lose signal randomly. And that's actually what's happening to me currently. So, like I said, I have to go out and try to fix that. Um, and then we have the options to reset the obstruction map which will basically reset this entire little 3D animation here, and it'll cause the dish to recalibrate. And uh, basically, if you've moved the dish, you want to reset the obstruction map so it can kind of recalibrate the obstructions and get a better idea of um, what's going on and what's around it. And then you have this Check for Obstruction button where you can click it, select what type of dish you have. Essentially what you do is you point your camera up at the sky and move it around and it's gonna effectively check for obstructions uh, in your location, which I can't actually do right now because I'm inside of my home. But yeah, if you could do that, you could hit ready and then it'll tell you right here, you could point in a various different directions. Let's see, I can point up. Actually, I can give a quick demonstration. So you can see you can point, I'm just pointing at the ceiling right now which obviously it's gonna show an obstruction in this case, but you can move around and try to fill in all those little round green dots. And once you've done that, it'll kind of give a rough estimation of what might be obstructing the view of your dish, which is pretty handy. Uh, then we have the speed test, uh, which is just a general speed test section. So you can go and see what speed you're getting currently. Um, it looks like right now I'm averaging roughly around 180 almost 200 megabits down uh, and then upload looks to be in the range of about 20 about 15 to 20 average here uh, with 20 millisecond latency and then we have advanced speed test 
which basically this is going to give you a more a more accurate representation of your true speeds that your dish is receiving so the router to internet speed is what you're actually getting from the satellites in the sky to your dish and that's your actual true uh, megabits per second and then your device to router is simply just a measure of how fast your local connection is that has nothing to actually do with the true internet connection speed uh, so if i go ahead and start a test you can see the router to the internet is running on average right about 90 at the moment and again that is from the satellites in the sky to the dish and then from the dish to the router so not entirely the greatest at the moment and then upload is still averaging around that 20 or so megabits down or upload speed there and then when it goes and switches to the device to router test you can see yeah so the device to router speeds are always significantly faster because of the fact that it's the local network and you're not actually talking to the internet uh, when doing this so the download is right right around 290 to 300 upload is a little less around 120 uh, and 130 or so so that's great uh, moving on, we have settings, which I'll get to in just a second. We have support, so you can go in here, and if you have a problem with your dish or your system or network, you can kind of open a support ticket to try to get some assistance, which is always nice. Uh, alignment, so this is where, and actually currently the dish is out of alignment, and the reason that being is is because if I rotated it into alignment, I'd actually be pointing directly at my house. Uh, and it'd be pointing at a wall essentially which is not ideal so i have to kind of have it out of alignment in this case for it to get basically any reception currently um, but yeah ideally you want to have the dish lined up within this highlighted or outlined rectangular space and it basically wants you to point the dish towards the west or the kind of the northwest positioning uh, to get the most optimal connection and the most optimal speeds uh, but in some cases, like in my case here, it's not always possible to do that uh, because currently I just have the dish mounted more close to the ground. Um, I don't currently have a way to mount it up on the roof or on a pole of any kind. Uh, so I'm kind of just stuck with what I've got at the moment until I can do that. And then going back over here, we have the settings menu, which this gives you your general settings for both the router and the dish. So you can check your network. You can click that and change your network settings. Uh, then we have content filtering, so if you want to block certain websites, uh, such as pornographic websites or uh, violent websites or something like that, uh, you can go in here and do that. Uh, and block malware websites as well that could cause a virus. Uh, you could do that as well to give a little bit more protection to your network. Uh, we have the ability to reboot. And then advanced has the ability to put in custom DNS settings, which I do actually recommend doing because it can optimize your overall uh, network connection. And the ones that I'm currently using is 1.1.1, and as the backup is 8.8.8. .8 so those are one the DNS settings that I would recommend people use, uh, because it's just going to help your overall network speed and reliability. But if you don't want to use that, you can always disable it by hitting the little toggle switch right there. And then we have bypass mode, and essentially what bypass mode is, is if you want to use your own third-party router and not use the included Starlink router, uh, you can go into bypass mode and plug in your external third-party router via one of the Ethernet ports on the Starlink router uh, to give you the ability to have your own, basically your own network uh, that you don't have to be controlled by what Starlink allows. So... Uh, you can put your own third-party router in there, set up different settings for that, port forwarding, and um, mesh, a different type of mesh network that you might already have. And then you have the ability to factory reset the router as well if you're having a problem, or if you want to return it to the store, or if you're not happy or something, you can do that, and it'll wipe out all of your personal information and settings that you had currently set for the router. And then the Starlink settings, you have the ability to do snow melt. So if you're in somewhere or a location that has a cold, snowy climate and that the dish may have the ability to have snow buildup, you can hit that and it will go into snow melt. 
Uh, and then you have a sleep schedule. So if you want the system and or the network to basically turn off uh, for a period of time, so say at night when you're not using any network and you don't need to have any network traffic flowing through, uh, let's say you can have your network and dish uh, stop internet connection from 12 a.m. to say 4 a.m., which is what's currently set now. Uh, and between those hours, you will have no internet connection. And then after 4 a.m., it'll boot back online and then you'll back to have connection again. And then if we go over here to the account information, uh, this is where you basically can see all of your account info. So you at the top, I have it blurred out, but at the top is where you would have uh, your account, personal information rather, your name, uh, your account number, and your uh, information like that. And then you have your billing, your orders, messages, and shop, uh, which I'm not going to go into any of these because some of them can have personal information contained within. And then you have at the bottom here your different Starlink. So you can actually have more than one Starlink dish connected to a single account. Uh, so currently I only have one. Uh, but I am at some point within the next month or so going to start testing the Starlink Mini. Uh, so that will probably show up in here as well alongside my current one. And then below that you have data usage, which is really nice actually because then you can see a view over the last month of how much data that you have transmitted uh, through the network. So currently I have used 97 gigabytes of data since August 1st. And then it shows your uh, type of plan. So currently I'm on the mobile regional unlimited plan. And then you have your toggle here, which allows you to turn on mobile priority data, which basically what this is, is as it states, you get network priority, ocean access, in motion connectivity, and global use. So basically with this toggle, and it allows you to, for $2 per gigabyte, so each gigabyte you use with this toggle on, you get charged $2 more, uh, which if you happen to forget that all being on, uh, that could get pretty expensive very quickly. So you want to remember to turn that off when you're done using it. So that is basically it uh, for this walkthrough of the Starlink app. But that being said, hit that like button. It's really greatly appreciated. Subscribe button as well, greatly appreciated. And comment below if you guys have any questions or need assistance uh, with anything involving this. And yeah, again, with that all being said, I will see you guys in the next one.